speaking of knowing how to act and react, right, and <laughs> knowing how to make these wise decisions, I want to talk a little bit about the bank robber who confessed to being the bank robber on his deathbed. And not really about the robbing banks and all that, right? So you sent the article, there was a guy robbed a bank like 1969 or something like that. I guess a couple months ago or something like that, he was on his deathbed. He had maybe some kind of, some form of cancer or something like that. So he confessed to his daughter and his, that, Wiz. And his wife that when he moved out there to uh, wherever he was at, I forget where he robbed the bank at. He robbed it in like, in like Ohio, I think like Cleveland yeah. or some shit like that. So he relocated, I guess this is, this is the 60s and 70s, back at a time when you could like, use, yeah, it was it was like easier, 69, 70. Easier to go, go and uh, relocate to someplace and get a new social security card and change your name and now you got a fresh start. You know, mm -hmm. you can't really up and do that kind of thing today. A crime in general was easier back then. But so he's out there living his life, has a family. And now he's dying. And on his deathbed, he decides to confess to his daughter. He's like, I I'm, I'm telling you this in case you start to hear something after I pass away. But I changed my name when I moved out here. My real name was like Ted Conrad. And mm -hmm. I robbed a bank back in Ohio, 1969. It was like $200,000. Mm -hmm. But. It was all unsolved mysteries Wow, mm. really? Because I, I, you know, I binge watched the whole Unsolved Mysteries during COVID. That's crazy. That's a whole other side note story. But every episode from the old school junk. This the type of shit this nigga. Yeah, that's what I be watching. Be on, yeah, yeah. Be on, yeah anyway. I had my wife watching Unsolved Mysteries with me every night. But at any rate, so, <laughs> so yeah, so, and I was in the car with my wife, and I was telling her about the story because I was reading it in the car, and she said something, and it made perfect sense to me. I'm like, yo. So he got $200,000 in 1969. That's like the equivalent with inflation of like $2 million today. Uh -huh. Right? So it was a nice, you know what I mean? Come up. Nice job. He fucked that all up. Before he even got married. Yeah, he <laughs> fucked that all up before he got married. But go ahead. So, <laughs> so I, didn't, I didn't even read that. Like, you got to tell me no, how he, he fucked did. it all he up. he fucked that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so he, he fucked the money up. But what I was going to say, and my wife wrote to me, she's like, oh, what is, why is his daughter saying this? If somebody make, and I agree with her, right? If somebody make, come on, man, I don't care. You flicking the joints? What are you doing? It was in my nose, man. I had to get it <laughs> so, out of here. <laughs> so, it's real yeah, shit. Man. Man. You get the it's raw terrible, shit. Yeah, like, yeah. It's raw. <laughs> hey, yo. He picked it, looked at it, rolled it around, judged it. You know what I'm saying? Graded it. <laughs> We're not going to get a close up with a joint hanging. Like, you know what I'm saying? Listen, we're not going to get a close-up with that joint hanging from there. Like, I'm a nigga. Like, I'm going to pluck that joint, dog. Yeah, so, it ain't hit you. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, right? Freeze up on your jacket and you cut yourself. But listen. <laughs> it's a golden job. Listen. So, and my wife made a good point. Like, yo, he made that confession on your deathbed. Why are you doing You got to be, you know, revealing all this to the public for attention. And I'm like, yeah, yo, you're right. Like, if, if I tell you something on the deathbed. That's just between you and I, like you know what I'm saying. Like I this don't is need... your father. Yeah, I'm your daddy. You know what I'm saying. And now you want to let this shit like because deathbed confessions are usually some very serious. Your real father is. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. Like, like dog. Like you know what I'm saying. Like I killed two people back in. Uh... And you could be. And you better be lucky that they don't. No real shit. <laughs> you better be lucky that because the shit. Listen, hold up. You forgot this part. Of the story. The man, the original cop, spent his whole fucking life trying to, oh, 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 trying to find this nigga. Then he got his son on the force. His son got a higher position and took on the burden from his pop. His pop died, nigga, and ain't never solved the case. Never saw All right? The, case. the son's still alive and ain't never solved the case. Like, mm, and ain't, ain't, ain't never, ain't never <laughs> solved the case, nigga. You get what I'm saying? It was other more serious crimes. They no, it's like, like it's you, murderers out you know there. The emoji, you know the emoji <laughs> like this and shit? That's on them. Like, These niggas is like... The, the the fucking dead nigga like I don't know what to tell you dog the seventies all them serial killers exactly. all the John Wayne Gacy's and all these Green Rivers why wouldn't BTKs, I worry about this little two hundred y'all worry about this two hundred y'all worry about this little two hundred man fuck out of here dog so through the whole crack epidemic and all this and and uh, Pablo Escobar mm -hmm. and all the coke y'all was worried about me and my little two hundred Iran Contra fuck out of here dog like, like you know what I'm saying no nah. why y'all ain't wasted y'all time but. I, and I don't know if there's like a statute of limitations on all that or whatever, but I was thinking like, yo, like, why would you come out and say that? Like, so they now know who, who, whose offspring, you know, you are. 
So what if your pop took that money and bought a house or something with it? You know what I mean? Pass that piece of property on down to you. It's like, isn't the... I don't, I, say, I don't know how this all works legally. Uh, that's why it's key that they were saying the story that he threw all that money yeah. before he even met his wife even before he had Because I feel like if I'm the bank just, and just you a, robbed it's, me... It's a past story. Yeah. Can I, I still sue you or come no. after you? No. So, can Statute I, of limitation. Am I entitled to any part nigga, of, of, of twenty estate? Uh, you know Statute what I'm saying? Statute of limitation like, normally like 20, 25 years. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's so 19, This nigga did this shit in 69. Many years ago. He was gravy by fucking fight the power. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 1989. That nigga was like, like, oh, this shit off. I've been got off yeah, on right. these niggas. Yo, my name Ted. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fuck my... Conrad, bitch. Conrad, bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fuck I my banks. banks. 